Hello and welcome back to the Now We Know Show. I'm Zach. And I'm Buzz. And in this bonus episode, we're going to be ranking Doctor Who Season 7. Now, this is classic Doctor Who we're talking about. It is, it is. And we're doing this as part of our Superfan series. So we had our first Superfan special guest in, Toby Jules. Which was based on Doctor Who. Definitely was. And he told us his Doctor was Tom Baker, but also he began watching Doctor Who and getting into Doctor Who with John Pertwee. So we thought, let's look at these eras and we're going to start off with John John Pertwee. Pertwee. So this is John Pertwee's first season. This is the first time we have ever seen Doctor Who in colour. And we basically recently revisited this season. We've watched them from the beginning to end. And now we're going to rank them from worst to best. Let's do it. Okay, first up we have the regeneration episode, which is Doctor Who Spearhead from Space. You certainly do. And it was a good one. It was great to revisit. First appearance of the Autons. Yeah, I would have watched this as a kid myself. Quite a few action scenes I found. Yes, and it was interesting to see how not only the Doctor makes his first appearance in this one, but also how he gets his clothes. Yes, because obviously units back in this one, they were previously with the second Doctor. Mm Mm-hmm in the invasion, and obviously Web of Fear. But yeah, it was interesting to see the interactions between Lethbridge Stewart and John Of course, John Pertwee. Lethbridge, Lethbridge Stewart didn't recognise the Doctor as being the Doctor. Because he'd regenerated. Because he'd regenerated. And uh, I assume he didn't know at the time that that could be a thing. No. Exactly. And and so, yeah, overall, it was... Uh, how many parts in this season? This was a 4 It's four the part. only four-parter of this season. Yeah. Simple, but effective. Yes, and... Uh, Kept you kept you on the edge of your seat all the way through, yes. I thought. Okay, so that's at the top of the list. Righty-ho, but that's just sitting there on the shelf because we've got nothing to compare it against as yet. So, Which leads us to... Number two. Doctor Who and the Silurians. Ah, the Silurians. I loved this back in the day. Seven-parter, so that's yeah, that, quite that, a big jump. That is a long one. I think, especially for people who watch Doctor Who nowadays, or New Who as it likes to be referred where they like to literally save the Earth or save the universe in one 45-minute episode. I think that's a little far-fetched. What, that they do that? Yeah. Or that they do it in 45 minutes? They do it in 45 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Whereas it takes... I don't know if anybody who is so used to that could sit through seven weeks, because that's what it was. You only watched it once a week, seven weeks worth. What an intriguing plot. It was. Um, You know, and the great thing about it, for me... Again, watching it for the first time when I was a kid, back in the 70s, was that you don't get to see the monsters straight Str- away. It was about four episodes in until you properly see a Silurian. Exactly. It builds up, builds up. And you think, what, what, are, what are these things? I think a lot of people would probably criticise these earlier stories for their kind of practical effects, not looking quite... Okay, so looking, reflecting on it all these years later, firstly, the BBC had a budget that mm. they gave to Doctor Who, which wasn't the biggest budget in the world. But also, yes, as you said a little while ago, we're starting to see Doctor Who in colour, but the TV sets <laughs> weren't great at the time, mm. you know? And, and you only got to see it that one episode on one Saturday, and then it was gone, never to be seen again. Or you think you're never going to see it again. Yeah, because what were the plans of then to you, you, re-show you, it, to re-release it on DVDs and stuff? You literally didn't have time to criticise or to think about the costumes. And in fact, I, I would go as far as to say a lot of the things that you see by re-watching it on DVD with the clarity of TVs and the quality of the, uh, 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 of the way that they've been put onto disc these days... You couldn't see those things back then. Mm. Yeah, it, the the TV as it was masked a lot of this stuff. Um, so I don't think people should be quite as critical as maybe they are. And when we watched this, didn't you find how relevant still this is today? Because it had that whole stint about towards the end of the story where there was an epidemic. Mm. <laughs> yes, that's right. And that was like frightening yeah, to this, see. Yeah, this this can literally destroy the whole of humanity. Um, reflecting modern times. That's like, it. Uh, crazy. Uh, and then you had a carrier go out into the world. Patient and Zero. And almost, patient yeah. Zero, yeah. And they're trying to track Patient Zero down, and Patient Zero is passing this infection onto other people. They can't stop the spread until they've des- got a cure. And they're desperately trying to quickly make this vaccinate cure. people. Yeah, find this, this cure so they can vaccinate people. It, yeah, I mean, it was so super relevant. relevant. Super and relevant. I didn't remember that at all until I re saw this. 
So the, who would have known, eh? But overall, forgetting about the wobbly sets and, and the iffy costumes, um, it's always the storyline and the way that the actors get it across that counts. Mm. Uh, I thought that was really good. So, Doctor Who and the Silurians. Uh, Do we think it's better than Spearhead from Space? I am actually going to put that in front of Spearhead from Space. Yes, I would agree. Okay, two great stories. So, now on to the third and penultimate story of this season. Possibly a very overlooked story in Classic Who, and that is The Ambassadors of Death. I will back you up on that because this is one that I don't recall seeing hardly ever. I mm. would have watched it when it came out. Again, a seven-parter, if I'm right. Yep, seven parts. And again, you don't see the aliens in it. Yeah, for the most part, the most you part don't really know what's what they going are, on. What they are, who they are, or anything. And you're quite right, it's a story that really doesn't get revisited yeah, it's that almost much. A, it's kind of a slow burn as you're watching it. You're kind yeah. of like looking for, and I think where's this going to go? That's probably its downside. It is a bit, at times, a bit too much of a slow burn. Mm, yeah, I can see that. Um, but the story, and yeah, when you get the, you, you go through literally six parts and you still haven't got a lot of answers to what is going on. And it rounds it up at the end and you say, ah, right, now I understand what this is about. So, you know, it's a good story, but it is a bit of a slow burn. Now, that was interesting because you obviously said for the previous story that it might be hard for some of the more modern audience mm -hmm. to get their teeth into. And I think this is definitely one of those that the model and audience yeah. just wouldn't be able to get behind. They would switch off after the first episode. Yeah, I think if they got to episode five, they'd be going, what on earth am I watching? Their is attention this, span wouldn't last that long. Is this not going anywhere? Because even I felt, after all these years, that this, this story, good story as is, could have been presented better. And... By comparison, the modern series, so Doctor Who Flux, for example, that yep. was six episodes. This is seven. Yep. So... But it did make more sense than the Flux. That is true. There you go. Uh, for me, you're going to ask me next where to put it. So for me, I'm going to put that behind Spearhead from Space. So that would put it into third place. Yeah, I enjoyed it, but I definitely enjoyed Spearhead from Space more. Yeah. And another little thing for me, it was good to see Derek Martin in there. A friend of ours who uh, was in the stunt crew at the time, who appeared in, in several different uh, Doctor Who stories. And it was like, we're watching it and go, hey, there's Derek. You know, <laughs> I, I thought that was a little treat. So on to our final story of this season, Inferno. Inferno. So we've already had a four part, a seven part, a seven part. And now we've got the final one, which is a seven part. So that's a lot of episodes. Very Considering much so. the amount of weeks these this whole season would have spanned. Mm. <laughs> okay, so this one, Inferno. Again, because of BBC budget constraints, this is a uh, season where the Doctor is stuck on Earth. Yeah, he doesn't really go anywhere. He doesn't go anywhere. And, of course, the blame is blamed on the Time Lords. Yeah. And he's always fiddling with his TARDIS to try and see if he can get the TARDIS to work correctly. And that's the start of this episode, start, isn't it? He's taken the TARDIS console out of the TARDIS and mm. basically got it in the workshop. Working on it. Working on it. What goes wrong? Well, it throws them... Into a parallel, parallel world. world. Parallel Earth. Mm. Where the project, which I think is actually called... Project Infer Inferno. Project Inferno. Where uh, they're drilling down to the Earth's core... To try and create a new, new, new form of energy. New energy that's going to, therefore, benefit mankind. Um, but the Doctor is already wary about... Possible, possible dangers dangers of this. And then when they get thrown into the parallel Earth... This realm, project is far more ahead. Mm -hmm. and well, It's basically coming to a conclusion, isn't it? Yes. Uh, and that is already thrown up lots of issues. But it's great to see all the characters in Unit are now these kind of... Totalitarianistic, dystopian, dictator-type dictator people. <laughs> yeah, with uh, the Brigadier with an eye patch. Yeah, yeah. Liz Shaw's got a wig on. You know, and... Um, and and the doctor trying to convince them, you know, to yeah, they probably think the he's, error of their ways. he's a, a an enemy spy or something, something like that. The story is great. I, I really love the story in this one. Interesting though, they had to bring in a kind of a monster, a monstery alien type thing. thing. So, and that was um, wasn't that pollution from? It was it was some something somebody touched something from. From, from, the from the actual extraction. drilling. Yeah. And then they all start sort of going... Mutating into... Sort of uh, regressing into a kind of primordial... Do you remember what they're called? Uh, 
I should do. Primords. Oh, they, I almost said it, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Primords. So they're kind of very primeval. And watching it, I couldn't help but think that they really, I can see how they put that in there to, for, to, for the kids at the time, back in the, the 70s. The kids, because, oh, it's a monster, it's a monster. But the story is, is really good. They didn't need them. It in didn't it. need it. That was the surprising thing. Normally with Doctor Who, it's like, oh, what's the monster oh, going to be? Oh, what's the monster? Oh, who's going to save the Earth? But Is the, the writing in this particular story was so on point that they really didn't need to be there. No, they didn't. And they weren't aliens as such, because obviously they were just people that had regressed um, to put a bit of action in there. But the story was great on its own. Oh, there's a good bit. So do you remember when the Doctor is being guarded by the alternate version of Sergeant Benton? Mm, I don't recall off the top of my head. And then he freezes him with two fingers. Ah, the, the two finger freeze. Yeah. Yes. And there's like a, a moment's pause before Sergeant Benton goes, ah! <laughs> and falls to the floor. I thought that was brilliant. That was, yeah. Using his, uh, was it uh, Venusian Aikido? Aikido. <laughs> which really needs to be in the new series of Doctor Who. That's just... And who can forget possibly one of the greatest cliffhangers in Doctor Who history? That's the ending of part six, where literally the world is ended. Lava's coming out of the ground and they're all surrounded around the TARDIS console. And then lava's coming in through the door and it's like, oh no, what's going to happen? And thankfully they managed to get out just in time to go back to their own parallel Earth. Yep. And then save the day. Save the day by stopping the drilling. Yay. Good. The Doctor wins again. Brilliant. Perfect ending. Without relying on the use of a sonic screwdriver Correct. to save the day. <laughs> Inferno. Where are we going to place this? So planet? I think by what we've said and how enthusiastic we were about this, mm -hmm. the I think story is just so good. It's fantastic. I think top spot worthy. But for this season, that's going straight in front. So there you are. It's on the shelf. Let's go through them. We've got four stories, one season. In fourth place, we have... Doctor Who, the Ambassadors of Death. In third place, we have... Doctor Who, Spearhead from Space. In second place... Doctor Who and the Silurians. And in first place... Doctor Who Inferno! Yay! That was a first good season oh, yeah, that to was... introduce John Pertwee as the Doctor. Oh yeah, that was fantastic. I wouldn't change it for the world. And amazing to think that I would have watched these all week after week after week after week. That, that This is one... Four stories take up so, so many weeks worth of enjoyment. So, on to season eight. <laughs> <laughs> Do you fancy doing another episode? Yeah. Going on to uh, the fact that this bonus episode is linked in with our Superfans series. Uh, and Toby obviously mentioned about John Pertwee, but his doctor is Tom Baker. So I think we should come back with a Tom Baker season. Possibly season 14, because we've been talking a lot about the Robots of Death. And there's definitely another story in that particular season that we well, are super, super in love with. Well, that would make sense. Because in our super fan series, not only have we had Toby in, whose favourite episode is Robots of Death, but we also had our episode, if you haven't listened to it, listeners, uh, with Brian Croucher, who starred in Robots of Death as Borg, if I... Yep, that's right. correct. Uh, so yeah, I think that season would be perfect. So the Doctor Who super fans episode with Toby Jewell is episode 22 of the Now We Know Show podcast. And our episode with Brian Croucher is episode 17 of the Now We Know Show podcast. We suggest you find those episodes and check them out. They are available on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music and Apple Podcasts. If you enjoyed this podcast, please like and subscribe to this channel and comment below any suggestions of topics or activities you'd like to listen to in future episodes. And that's a big Doctor Who are you? Goodbye from Zach. And a big Primords goodbye from Buzz. <laughs>